Um, it was last night at about five o'clock. Um, I was sort of sitting here and sort of a cup of coffee and looking at these things and thought, well, if that equals that, and if we stick that equation into that one, and if that equals that, then this drops out. Now, having just as you walk through the door realised that the equation that drops out is a fairly fundamental one that was derived by Einstein, um, that gives me great confidence <laughs> that we're actually on the right track. <laughs> I was at a conference uh, in Cambridge about 10 days ago and I bumped into somebody I used to work for and she was sort of chatting to me about uh, confirmations of molecules and th things like that and how she analyses them. Um, and she uses a very specialised form of mass spectrometry so she puts these proteins into the gas phase and normally what you do is you measure their molecular weights and their charge and she's got a way of doing it which looks at their conformation as well, but she can't relate the absolute confirmation of these molecules to um, what she what that she actually sees these nice peaks in the gas phase. So it would be nice to say, well, this one is compact, this one is extended, um, this one's a sphere or a, a ring of molecules. Um, it could be really quite important. Um, and she asked me, sort of, because I'm from an allied field, if I had any ideas, and I thought, oh, well, probably about this, that, and the other. And uh, somebody else emailed you about it yesterday as well, which got me thinking. So I went to sort of the literature, did a bit of scribbling, and I realised that there's a huge amount of equivalence from one field, which is why I'm working on hydrodynamics and solution, to another field, which is what they're working on, mass spectrometry in the gas phase. And just by and as you came through the door I was just sort of fiddling with some stuff to realize that what I'd actually managed to do was derive what what do they call it uh, uh, something quite fundamental oh the Nernst Einstein Townsend equation which I've managed to derive by another completely different means so um, it's got Einstein in the in the title so it's probably quite important <laughs> if we've got say these are for all intents and purposes have all the same properties um, such as mass and charge uh, as each other. They're just different conformations. What we're saying is that these will move through the solution or gas differently. So if because you're... Of their shape. Because of their shape. Um, and so basically hydrodynamics as we think of it um, for molecules is exactly the same sort of thing that we do for gases. So um, it means that we can tell whether the molecule is sort of this sort of shape or this sort of shape. More importantly, we can say, well, you know, if we only have like two bits of a molecule like this and we have some flexible linkers in between, we can start to model possible conformations or how these things might go together, like this or like this. Is conformation just a fancy way of saying shape? It is, but it's a bit, little bit more than that. Um, especially with proteins, shape and com or the conformation that you find them in, the way, way all the bonds are and all the atoms point, dictates structure, and structure dictates function. Protein molecules, of course, are vast things like this, being sort of these little gases, like little pinpricks on the side. So, so can, I, can I... This is what I think has happened. Tell me how far off the mark okay. I am. There's a coefficient, there's yeah. a way that you can figure out how... Uh, molecules move through liquid. Yeah, and that's you. You quite understand that yep. quite well. You've now made done some fiddling around with numbers and some scribbling yeah. on paper there, and you've now come up with a similar coefficient yeah. that works for molecules going through gas. In fact, it's the same coefficient. Um, and the important thing is that we have ways of calculating that coefficient, which work very well for solution. And because of some of the approximations we use for solution, which we don't have to do in the gas phase, for instance, uh, proteins have a bound layer of water around the side. And you, in the solution, you have to account for that. In the gas phase, you don't. And so that actually makes our, this method more accurate. Uh, well, we've got diffusion coefficient here, which is d we define as D, right? Which is related to this quantity B, which... Um, we call the mechanical mobility, which is basically as you, the, the mobility as you pull this thing through gas under, a, under an electric field. And uh, this B is well known to be derived from a, 
a, a host of different quantities, right? But when you actually start substituting it back, right, you can get the diffusion coefficient drops in here, which relates it back to this term here, or basically that uh, the actual mobility, which is also to do with the charge and its mechanical mobility. So obviously, if you double the charge, you double the mobility, which is well known. So it all drops out through here that the actual mobility that you measure is equal to the charge times the diffusion coefficient, which has all the um, shape terms in, um, as well as obviously things dependencies on things such as molecular weight and such like, um, and, and times by the absolute temperature, um, times by this quantity here, which always seems to drop in with thermodynamics, is called the Boltzmann constant. Um, and this is, the, this is what's known as the Nernst-Einstein-Townsend equation.